Hey guys, what's going on and welcome back to another episode of the Wild Chat. The Northwestern Wildcats are on their way to their first ever national championship in men's basketball. Okay. After okay. a massive oh. win over Michigan okay. and Indiana. That's better. Thank you. I'm trying to get there. Anyways, Boo Booey, now the official all-time scoring leader for Northwestern history. An incredible night at Welsh Ryan Arena, which Ashley had to miss. I had to miss, unfortunately. Lame. However, Adam and I were there. It was an incredible atmosphere. Northwestern moved to 8-0 and at home in conference play. What went right for Northwestern? Well, I mean, the first half was a little, it was a little sketchy. I'm not going to lie. This Michigan team can kind of scrap a little bit. Um, you know, the shooting wasn't really there in the first half. It kind of just felt like the game was waiting for Boo Booey to get the record and then, like, for the game to start. But Michigan took advantage early, got up, up to, to a nice 10-point lead at one point. Um, but Northwestern fighting back in the second half just with, you know, Michigan, they just can't play second half basketball. Northwestern took advantage. Ryan Langborg cooking. I think he had, like, 20 points. But, I mean, he's been so smooth lately. Ever since getting ejected against Rutgers, he has been the man. Revenge arc. The man. The, the worst call of all time. Well, I, I understand it. I don't. No, no, no. I don't so, either. So the rule is... I don't you, care what the rule is. It's a stupid if you, rule. If, if you make contact sentence. with that area of the body, what what it's, area either, it's, either a, it's either a foul, just like a, just a regular foul, or it's a, tech, or it's a flag or two and you're out of there. Okay, but I will, I will say... they thought it was excessive contact, and then that's why it's... Dude, did we see the play later on in the game where the Rutgers guy went out of the way to kick Justin Mullins yep. before getting up, and that just was not... I feel a, like that was worse. I agree. It was an Aaron Rodgers, New Dominican Sioux situation. Dominican Sioux just going yak on his on, on his cleat, but whatever. Yeah. Well, um, Aaron Rodgers doesn't know much about like having intact like Achilles, but that's fair. Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't know where I'm going. Northwestern with Western basketball. basketball. I really wanted to take a dig at Ashley. Western basketball. <laughs> Thanks. How are Go we feeling? Like, what are the what are the vibes right now? Like, are we feeling good? Are we feeling bad? Give me give me give me a thumbs up, thumbs down. Okay. Oh, actually, uh, let me give the... Uh, I'm feeling pretty good. Oh, you're feeling really good. I'm feeling pretty good. Um, what I liked was that we were finally able to snatch an away win, and I feel like... Huge. Not like we weren't... We've never done it before. We have. But it Once. had... Yeah, one other time. <laughs> so I felt nervous because I was like, do we just lose the rest of our away games, win the rest of our ones at home, and call it a day? I feel like we kind of needed an, needed an away win somewhere. Um, got it at Assembly Hall... Electric atmosphere. Adam and I were was lucky really enough to be there. It was, no, it, it was, wasn't actually. It was like electric. slightly electric for. It wasn't it. that electric. No, there I were like moments that there were moments. It was there. electric for me because I saw them win. Um, Adam was a, a media member. Adam so was, was in the media, so weren't he had like to be both, stoic. So okay, incredibly high up. Time out about yes. about assembly hall though. Like that building makes no sense. Like I'm sorry, it is so symmetrical that it is like it is not symmetrical. Also, nobody. Nobody in there, like the staff, have no idea where the press box is. We got like pushed in like seventeen different directions at one point. Very, very confusing. I was like lost. I finally found somebody that was like had like you know the the honesty and and the right minded attitude of saying I actually don't know where to point you, <laughs> but I'm going to find you someone that they do know where to point you into. So that happened, and then I was like fine, but still I got lost like twenty five. No, times. I will say I had a similar issue in which we were directed to go up like maybe six flights of stairs <laughs> to only get there and realize that we weren't supposed to go up. So then we had to go back down. And then the people that were blocking the main area just didn't care that we walked in, even though originally they had told us we couldn't go. So the staff were just confused. Um, but that's a different problem. That's not a Indiana basketball I feel, basketball like, I feel like we're putting a lot of like negative energy on us. Let's hall. not. It's really cool. It it's is. really cool. It is so. very cool. Um, it was a lot cooler than my bed while sick. I'll tell you that. But hey, win's a win. Win's a win. A win is a win. A win is a win. win. Although, cats really do make it cardiac. It was down to the end, and I feel like we had that game. We were up by, I think, maybe 13 or something. They were up by 16 with like six up. minutes like left. We were so good, and then all of a sudden we weren't so good. Indiana starts making shots, and we just have no response. So I think the away win was really good. What made me nervous is that we didn't really have, once they got hot, we didn't really respond to it. The good thing, though, is the f we were able to make free throws and clutch free throws in that game. Remember, like, earlier in the year against Minnesota, where, like, there was there were opportunities to kind of clinch that game, close that game at the free throw line, and Northwestern just couldn't. Like, it, like somehow they became allergic to making free throws. Like, Boo Boo was going one for two at the line. Like, that just doesn't happen. Against Indiana, I will say the free throw making was a lot better. Ryan Langborg went, went like, four for four Pop in the last off. 25 26 seconds. Points, I think it was. Yeah, 26 points. Um, went 4-4 from the free throw line in like the last 25 seconds. Brooks hit 
one of two late to like ice the game. But um, yeah, good to get an, a road win. Obviously, the win at Michigan was huge, or against Michigan at home was huge. But we've got a very big matchup this week against the Maryland Terrapins at Maryland. Big for Big Ten seeding, big for Big Ten standings. Could potentially be a... It's a quad one game. Quad one game as of Actually, now. I don't know if, since they've lost. But it's it's quad one. It's, it's yeah. tight. It's tight. Yeah. Well, I think big part of this game is last time we did a podcast was right as Ty Berry went injured and we weren't sure what his deal would be. Now we know for a fact done for the season with surgery. We should talk a little bit about the guys who have stepped up now because we kind of made our predictions of how they were going to replace him. I think we have to probably start with Blake Smith because he got some serious minutes in that Michigan game and in the that, that Indiana game when Boo Boo had some foul trouble. And he's turned into like a real defensive menace so far in this defensive third. Only one point, but he seemed to be all over the court and he's playing great defense. Yeah, he's getting minutes. I, it, it's kind of weird though, this Northwestern team, when, you, when you're bringing in Justin Mullen, when you're bringing in Blake Smith, it looks like Jordan Clayton just isn't going to get any time anymore. Which is interesting because he was the guy before that. But I yeah. think it makes sense because Jordan Clayton offensively thought that he could make shots, but really had no confidence to make shots. So he didn't actually think he could make shots, but he would still shoot, but like miss. So it, it just wasn't very a productive environment. Sure, he was a good defender, but Blake Smith is just, he's putting his heart and soul out, out on the line. He burned his red shirt to, to, to come in and, and, and play, fill part of the gap of Ty Berry, uh, obviously, and, and the injury. But he is, he's playing some really high quality basketball. Even though he's not going to be a scoring option, he's not going to be a scoring threat, he's not going to really, you know, be able to. To, to cash in from deep or be a 3 and D guy, but he's going to just put his heart and soul and energy on the line, his spirit, defensive-minded attitude, just, I'm going to work hard, I'm going to play hard, and that's really what he's been doing. But I love what Justin Mullins has done, too, off the bench, too. The game against Rutgers, when we saw him really kind of step up into a bigger role, had, like, three or four blocks in that game. I just just with five. Yeah, he's, he's ridiculous. Like, he's actually ridiculous. If he's able to hit shots consistently, too, um, his athleticism is off the charts. It's just been consistency on offense, I feel like. And sometimes... His athleticism almost overtakes um, his like defensive fundamentals. I feel like I feel like there's times where he just relies more on his speed, his quickness, rather than actually playing good defense at times, which can lead to some foul troubles. But if he's someone that can like find consistency from deep, that would be huge. But like Blake Smith, you know, Justin Mullins, all these unsung heroes, really caring right now. Yeah, and I also think we mentioned Dylan and I mentioned this when we potted before Rutgers. We were like, all right, Ryan Langworth's got to step up. And he really did. Um, and I was worried he that he wouldn't. Him. He kind of started, I feel like he started the season, wasn't really performing to the extent that we thought he was going to. Tiberi out. I would have loved to see what he did at Rutgers um, mm -hmm. if he hadn't been ejected because that would have been sick. I think, I think we win that game. Whatever. It's okay. We move on. Um, but I really like the ways. I mean, he's been a demon on the court lately. Um, so I think without that, we wouldn't have got. Indiana wouldn't have happened. Surely yeah. Michigan wouldn't have happened either. I mean, he's been he's been a menace, menace to society, a beast, if you will. Um, and I, I just really liked what I've seen from him stepping up. I mean, I know that's more of like the oh, we knew he would step up, but like he actually he actually did. He's actually performing and following through. So shout out Ryan Langford. Um, that's like what how he's playing now is how I expected him to play initially after seeing him in March Madness last year. And it took him a little bit. He had to cut. He had to let him cook. And now he's cooking. I feel like we've always seen that intelligence from him with those oh, yeah. like crazy timeout plays in the middle of the air. And yeah. now he's put it all together where the offense has taken the role, shape of what we want it to be and what it can be. You mentioned the Rutgers game. Him getting ejected, though, may have been the best thing long term for that team. Because, yes, they may have lost that game, but it allowed so many other guys to get playing time and really get a feel for the game. And I think that's going to be crucial just as this season continues down these last four games of the regular season and into March. I would argue that might have been the most educated take that you have ever had and ever spoken at any point. Honestly I, proud of you, because I didn't know you had that in you. Thank you. But he's got that dog in him, apparently. He's, he's, been, he's been cooking up a storm. It's right. almost his birthday in a, in a little bit. By the time this is posted, it will be his birthday. I'm going to so. be getting a call in seven minutes when so, it hits 12 So, so wish a very happy birthday to Dylan over here. Um, the big 2-0. 2-0. Like zero. Ryan Langborg against Michigan. Yeah. No, but Lang Lang good. Langborg's been fun. Langborg's been fun. Um, obviously, Boo. I going back to the, the Boo record breaker. I think the funniest thing from it was seeing Northwestern men's basketball Twitter post like the John Sherna, like <laughs> like congrats, the video, Boo. Yeah. But it was like edited every like three <laughs> seconds, yes. so there you were just mini, the cuts there were just the mini video. jump cuts. Just like I don't know. That I thought that was really funny. But it was very magical. 
my mom is calling me early, so you guys continue. I'm gonna go take a quick step outside. <laughs> okay. Dylan is back from his mom giving him a phone call. Um, obviously this week, big week for the Cats. Northwestern goes to Maryland, goes to College Park to face the Terrapins. Northwestern already beat Maryland earlier this year in Evanston, close tight game. What are you really looking for in that one? Um, <laughs> okay, I can start. Um, okay, what I'm, so it was a close tight game when we originally played them, but we know we can beat them. I think the issue is when we were playing Indiana, we beat them, but barely. After being up by 13, well, I think we said 16, yes. After being up by like 16, um, I think if Indiana had made a couple more free throws, we wouldn't have had that win, right? So I think it's about having control throughout the entire game, not just playing. I mean, Michigan played second half basketball. Indiana played more first half basketball. We need to be more consistent throughout. That's what I'm going to be looking for because I think we did a good job with that against Maryland when we first played them, right? But if we don't do that again, then we're just not going to get that win. So my key word here is consistency. And when we look at last year's game as well, I think Maryland shot something like 60% from three in that game there. If they did that same thing, then Northwestern can pack it up because they're not going to be a team on the road that's shooting 60% from deep. However, I think that they have a way to win games now. And it's going to take another huge boo-boo in Ryan Langborg game, but I see it happening just because they've been so clutch lately. And I think that the other huge thing is they're going to have basically a week off from games. They needed rest, and they are absolutely getting some crucial rest before this game. And that's something that I think is going to be key. I don't know when Maryland plays, but they played today. Or they played today or yesterday, I feel yeah. like. So they'll be on shorter rest. Uh, it'll be a good game, though. Looking forward to it. I, I think the biggest thing for this Northwestern team, the last game to this game, is just the ability to rebound against a team like Maryland, against a team where, where you have Juju Reese, you get some bigger bodies inside. Glass is always really critical. I'm pretty sure last time Maryland was really physical in the glass. That's why the game was so tight in the first place. But Northwestern's been a lot better rebounding of late. Obviously, without Ty Berry, you've had to go to a bigger lineup, have Nick Martinelli in there, who's had a couple, you know, 10-plus rebound games. He had 13 in Indiana, um, which is absolutely massive. But you really need a big game from Brooks Barnizer, who I feel like has been kind of lackadaisical mm -hmm. lately. You know, the shooting hasn't been quite there just because with the spacing and the offense hasn't been there um, for him to knock down those threes. But the game against Michigan, he was had another double-double. Good to see from him. Good signs of life from Brooks Barnheiser because, sure, Boo and, and Ryan Langborg doing a really good job right now offensively. But you've got to have Brooks Barnheiser contributing because if you don't have Brooks Barnheiser, Barnheiser contributing, you can't put all of the offensive weight on the guards. One thing as well, then, if we want to talk about another position, I feel like we got to talk about center. Yeah. Nicholson who has also been huge and really taken really that good. step up. He's now back, I would say, to that UCLA game type form, mm -hmm. where that UCLA mm -hmm. game, we were all like, this is his peak. I'd argue he's almost surpassed that peak in what he has done these last three games. Defensively, he's been great. He's been great getting rebounds. He finally doesn't have those brick hands. He's actually coming down with rebounds yeah. now, and he's scoring. He's, he, made, he made a jump shot against Indiana. That like, was the craziest that was crazy. like, He made a jump shot. Like, <laughs> like it, it, was, it was like an eight-footer, but like, it, it was it, a jump, it was a jump shot. And I think he, he attempted another one against Michigan. I he think. might have. I, I just, it's unbelievable. Like, anyway, point is, if you can have him contributing as a big... While then if, having the depth with Hunger. And having the depth with Hunger, yep. who who's looks, who's yep. looks good off the bench. Like, I think he, I had, think eight he, against, great. he had eight against Michigan. Um, someone who can hit the three a little bit um, and, you know, be another fast to the offense off the bench. The bench scoring is really critical. I always love a Hunger three. Always. Come on. Always. Yeah, there's nothing better in the sport of college basketball. But with that said, comes down really late end of the season. Really, we, we start looking at the NCAA tournament. We start looking at the Big Ten tournament. Right now, Northwestern in the four spot in the Big Ten. Tied kind of with third with Wisconsin, but I think Wisconsin is the tiebreaker. Um, they're half game in front of Nebraska. So kind of really on the line of being in a double by position, which is absolutely essential, I feel like, from a Northwestern perspective. Um, but that's kind of where things stand. Remember, Michigan State lost to Ohio State over the weekend. And that was huge because Michigan State, if they had won that game, they would have been right in the same conversation as Wisconsin and Northwestern. But now Northwestern is a little bit of a buffer. So that game against, you know, that game against Michigan State early in March could be a huge one in terms of maybe Northwestern knocking Michigan State maybe out of a tournament spot. Mm -hmm. Who knows? Um, but so much fun down the end of the road of the season. The Big Ten seeding. 
all the storylines, all the fun things. We'll have all the action coming up. Um, but any any parting words? I think we can do it. Um, I really do. I just think if everything we just said comes together, we got it. Like, we have the talent on the team. Um, I just think it all boils down to, do we have the consistency from everyone on the team at the same time? If everyone on the team is performing at their best, we got to win. Well, Easily. we're winning a national championship for that. Happens. Yeah. Oh, if Come that on. happens, of Duh. course. Duh. Pardon me. When Bowie puts up 45 in that championship game and we fucking against, build the statue, against. Miami, when Miami goes on a big run to win the ACC tournament and then, yeah. Sure. Okay, wishful thinking. With that said, go Cats. Go Cats. Go Cats, baby.